And I think this is a good point, place that we, we see that as um, Eve, the process that goes through here as sin begins to have its effect and its allure. And um, this is so crucial to our understanding that this is Genesis chapter 3. All right? We have this incident here, the original sin, the fall of man, because sin and death is introduced here. In the rest of our Bible, okay, except for the first two chapters, and then the last two chapters, we have this issue, all right, all the way through here that deals with this sin problem. And one of the tragedies today in America is <clears throat> too many good-meaning people tried to stay away from the sin word. There's been a movement for maybe 15 or 20 years, um, seeker-sensitive type of models and stuff, and there's, you know, good people out there, but the deception is, has God said? They're not being honest with the full counsel of God. The Apostle Paul said, I haven't held back anything. He goes, I gave you the full counsel of God. And, you know, sometimes it, it hurts, you know, our pride, our self-esteem, um, you know, to, to be told that, that we have a problem. But we do, and if we're going to be honest with ourselves, okay, pulpits around America and all over the world need to get back and talk about the real issues because to steer away from sin and possibly offending somebody is, is foolish. It's foolish because... Jesus always went and dealt with the heart of the problem. He always went to the core issue of sin. And, you know, that's why God's holiness cannot tolerate sin. That's why Jesus died on a cross for us because he didn't even give the Son of God a pass. When Jesus became sin... That's what happened on the cross. It says, he who knew no sin became sin. And God poured out his wrath on his own son, taking our, who knows what, but he just poured out his wrath on his own son, sparing not his only son. All right? God deals with sin. So let's uh, bounce over um, to James. Uh, it's towards the back here. I think we got enough time. Maybe we can finish uh, this little segment here. This is called uh, Anatomy of Sin, and I'm going to do a whole teaching uh, just, just on this. So we're in James chapter 1, verses uh, 12 through like 15. This is anatomy of sin, and then we'll take a quick look at this, and we'll wrap this session up. Um, it's talking about loving God under trials. James here says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. When he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, says which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So that means that Christians are going to have some temptations because God wants to see how you respond, that free moral agent uh, thing we were talking about. And it says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Okay? But each one, listen to this. Now this is where 
God's assigning, showing us where the origin is here. It says, but each one of us is tempted when he is drawn away. That's that hawk, all right? Drawn away by his own desires and enticed, right? Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Okay, so there's a process going on here. And sin, when it is full grown, brings death. Now let's go back to uh, Genesis chapter 3 and see this, this, this process also. So Eve saw the tree, okay? She's, she's looking now, she's being enticed. Okay, this is the way Hollywood works, all right? Saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, right? See this process going on? A desirable, so now she's being enticed, right? It says she took of the fruit and ate. Sins conceived, and God says, the day that you do it, you'll surely die. So sin brings death, and we need to know what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and wrap up this session here. Um, a little tough here, but it's, it's critical to our understanding, to understand the origin of sin, the origin of death, and how that absolutely just cripples faith. Because faith, remember, unbelief is sin. All right? So what we want to do is we'll wrap this up, and, and next week we'll begin to look uh, a little closer at shame and guilt and, and the effects of, of sin that we deal with that only God can cleanse us from. Many of the problems people have today who, who go to psychological offices and stuff, they're really dealing with the, uh, guilt issues. They have, they have uh, a guilty conscience or they've been wronged and there's unforgiveness and, and guilt and shame all wrapped up, all has its origin right here, okay? And only God can forgive sin. Now, do you want that forgiveness? I tell you what, it's when you enter into God and you ask Him to forgive Him, you, of our sins, right? To forgive. God's idea of forgiving is forgetting. If you want to invite the Lord Jesus into your heart to forgive you of your sins, to have the burdens and the guilt, I'm not promising you, you know, a winning ticket to the lottery here. What I'm promising you is freedom from the sins of the world. Invite the Lord into your heart. Make him not only Lord, but Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. I need you. Help me to understand your words so I can better please you and live a life well pleasing unto you. We got an exciting episode coming next week. Stay with us. We'll see you next time on Winds of Change. God bless you.